I am Mike Shapiro. I am the chairman of Equity Forbes Global Properties here in headquartered in Newport Beach, California. Hey, it's Kellen. And today on Diversified Game, I have Mike Shapiro. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to say, Mike Shapiro, how'd you get him on the show and say, you know, <laughs> I saw him doing something with Forbes. And it's like, yeah, of course, Shapiro, Forbes, you know, big money names. They're going to, you know, run together. But he actually has a new book he's going to tell us about and talk to us about situational awareness, which is something that if you have kids, you're always trying to tell them, don't get hit by a car. Keep your head on a swivel like the football coach used to tell us. But a lot of you, even as adults, haven't learned that lesson. And it's the reason why it doesn't matter how much money you make, you're still finding yourself, you know, in debt, living paycheck to paycheck. So take some notes, look in the description, get some game. Mike, welcome to the show. How you doing? Thank you. Thank you for having me, having me on your show. Well, thank you for coming on and thank you for writing a book on something that I think that I have an A plus in, but in school, I had like a 1.9 GPA in high school because my situational awareness was good, <laughs> but everything else was like, could you apply yourself only to find out I was dyslexic like 30 years later, right? So give us the game on, you know, how did we get here? Because you have plenty of interviews. So I could tell people they can YouTube you. You get asked the cookie cutter questions. I don't do that. I want to know this book. Why did you write it? And, you know, what inspired it to help people like myself? So I guess uh, my inspiration was my father. Um, and uh, the reason behind that is I my upbringing was just a little unusual. Uh, my dad came from terrible poverty. It was uh, not a great situation in Brownsville, Brooklyn, I mean, really in the slums. And he um, had a situation with his own family where it was all conditional love. It was just not a great situation at all. And so he had to break through all of that stuff to, in order to make it and took all the back roads. So he, he um, got married to what he calls the greatest thing that ever happened to him, um, became a lawyer had children, and he raised um, us in a different way. So he raised us where he effectively um, celebrated everything that I lost at. <laughs> so essentially, I was celebrated as a loser. So anything that I was a train wreck at, whether it be um, making a goal for the other team in soccer, or whether starting on the other side of the pool, or whatever I did wrong, I just remember praise. Like just, <laughs> if, if I ever did anything right, I don't really remember like having great praise. So what did he do for me? I'm not exaggerating. What he did for me is with this unconditional love, he created a situation where I became sort of a sociopathic, for lack of a better word, um, risk taker. And like, I never feared risk. Uh, and so um, he gave me the tools in order to be this entrepreneur that, that has really sort of created my life. So I was sharing a lot of what he did for me with the world and a lot of people I coach, you know, like, don't be fearful. A lot of it stems from fear. The reason the book is called um, Read the Tape is that my first career choice was I was a trader on the exchange floor as a stock option trader. And so basically what you're doing is you're reading, it comes from Wall Street, you're reading the stock prices and you have to decipher, you know, what does that mean? And back in the, um, really, really long time ago, I'm not young. <laughs> um, we literally had to read the tape and determine like what was probability of where the prices were going to go or what's going on and listening to the crowd on the exchange floors in terms of what was the probability in terms of, you know, is the stock going up, is the stock going down, what's happening in the economy. So it was just sort of a, a tune to that thing. So that's what I call read the tape. And I've used that skill set across my business career and the various things that I've done as an entrepreneur consistent entrepreneur because of my upbringing of being a sort of a serial entrepreneur. Don't fear that failure. At all, at all. Now, is that something, and, and before I say, ask my next question, let me just clarify, because someone will say, hey, Shapiro, his dad's a lawyer. His 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 dad's not Robert, you guys. So no. however you think, how, yeah. <laughs> Although interestingly make... <laughs> enough, he used to take my reservation. That was back in the day we were doing business in Los Angeles. And he um had a son that was my age at the time. And he was always, I love that restaurant, Spago. Everyone knows Spago, you know. And I 
my wife and I would go to Spago and someone would be sitting in our reservation. It was really funny. So I've met him. And I'm like, you took my reservation. <laughs> gotcha. So, That's yeah. funny. That, <laughs> that is, is, is funny. Um, you guys don't use his name to go get a reservation when, you know, you, you need. Yeah, we <laughs> <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't work for me. It worked for him. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, with getting fearless like that, is that something that you're born with or do you build up? Because a lot of times kids, you'll see them fearless, but it's like the adults telling them no, 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 and hitting their hand and things that, you know, can, you know, AI and expansion and coding and all this great stuff that makes life a lot easier. But, you know, is that something that you were born with or did that, you know, get kind of build up? Well, you know, it's always that funny story. Show me the five-year-old, I'll show you the man, you know, like, how are you when you're a kid? And I'm sure you have kids and I'm sure you like look at some of the things as they grow older, like, where'd that come from? Or what is this? So I would say that, that like, there are people that are um, born with certain skill sets or they're born with, um, you know, ability to feel great at all times or be fearless. I apologize. I have quite a few dogs in the background. So there you go. <laughs> Um, I'm try. I'll try to mute them, but it doesn't work. <laughs> um, so anyway, but I do think it's learned behavior to some degree. I do think that um, really um, you can learn how to be situational aware. You can learn to be the best that you can be. So something that I teach um, in general, and it's in the book as well, is I call it inner genius. So I think that everyone has something about them that's really amazing. I don't think what it is is about to find out what that is about them and express that creatively, if that makes any sense. So I don't think everyone has the same skill set. I think everyone's unique and everyone has something great about them. And that's what I look for to help to get that out in terms of where, where they are in the world and how do they express that and how they become the person that they want to be or the goals that they have. And it's not always money. It's, you know, success is measured in many different ways. So I don't want to just talk about money, which is what we mostly talk about. There are many other ways to be successful. Okay. Definitely, definitely. And, and you know, I'm glad you don't want to just talk about money because it really, it's a pet peeve of mine with all, everybody now is a philanthropist. Everybody's an entrepreneur. Even if you see them working at their nine to five, they're all of those things. And they're talking about, you know, my, my kids have generational wealth. We never have to work again. Where blue bloods and people who really live that life all over the world, you'll never see them online talking like that. But can you talk about as a trader, you have to have nerves of steel. And what are your thoughts when you see like on YouTube or maybe um, I'm even hearing on TikTok, a lot of learning is being done. When I go to it though, I'm hearing people say, oh, learn how to trade in a week, in a month. I can show you how I made this wealth. And it's like the traders, I know everyone, has gone, you know, they, they've they lost and they've a lot of them yeah. have lost big to come back. Right. And that story doesn't get told, at least on TikTok or YouTube, a lot. Um, How do I say that without swearing? But um, most of the- Say it, tell you what you got to <laughs> say, Mike. <laughs> um, that's a bunch of bullshit. I mean, what you see, it's an unfortunate aspect of social media is that people show um, sort of fallacies, like look at me and look at all this stuff and- you know, just do this. And so, no, I think that trading is a very difficult thing. In fact, I tell people not to do it. It took years and years and years for me to become successful. In fact, what I did up front when I was a professional trader, I was like doing it for a living on a floor, being backed by others, you know, and all of the other aspects of the educational process. Um, I didn't make it. I mean, when I started making money, it's almost... Um, it's an odd thing to talk about. It's almost anti-human. The element of making money as a trader is that, um, how do I describe it? It's a loser's a loser's a loser, get out. Um, it never comes back. So all these human traits that people have, like even with their, their um, social contacts, like, oh, they're going to change, but they never do. Oh, if I invest in this, I'm just going to wait it out. It'll come back. All these things, you have to sort of, sort of put yourself numb that and sort of look at that moment in time, sort of situationally aware in order to really make it. So when I became a profitable trader is like really a moment to moment um, decision process or literally reading the tape, not getting stuck into the human qualities of um, trading. So people um, treat those assets in ways that already will make them fail. 
I believe in this, or I believe in that, or I believe in the meme stocks, or I believe in this person or that. And there are aspects of this that are called momentum trading. And so I have made money in momentum trading, but the key is that you just don't stay there. There is no like fundamental basis for that to have a value, if that makes any sense. So like things like Apple or, um, you know, companies that make sense, even Tesla, which is the meme stock to some degree, they're making, they're manufacturing products. They are making money. You can see it in the earnings. There are actual tangible values to that versus the things that you've seen sort of like the GameStop play or Bed Bath & Beyond. I mean, I'm not, first of all, never listen to anybody pontificates about anything to invest in. So don't listen to me. Um, these are just my my opinions. I have to say this. Like, um, are my opinions on what to do. So no, I don't think it's a smart move. I don't think people should trade for a living unless they're professionals and they understand it. I think people should be investors. So investment is great ideas with great people, with great management, and they have products that are that people want. I mean, it's really not that complicated, I mean, I, I, frankly. Um, so the question is, is what, does, what is the next wave and who do I bet on? And so people like to bet on Elon Musk, where he seems to have a lot of hits on his hand. Let's put it that way. And he is a, clearly a genius, even though he seems to get in his own way on a consistent basis. In the end, he was putting in the hard work. He's putting in the creative talent. He's putting in the capability of um, what it takes to make it. And his drive, I was just listening on the radio. I was driving for, um, from our office in the desert. I was listening to... Um, an autobiographer, a, a biographer of um, Elon, he's written about Steve Jobs, and he was allowed to uh, walk around with him for two years with, with unfettered access, literally like watched him. And it was a very brutally frank interview when he was talking about him. And his drive was from his youth where he wasn't felt that, it, his, in fact, he was put down all the time. So he wanted to prove otherwise. So anyway, I don't mean to get on a tangent here, but it's just interesting to listen to these people who have become He's the wealthiest man in the world. So we look at him. We say, why did that happen? How did he do it? How was he creative? What did he do to create all this momentum and create this type of leadership? Definitely. And I enjoyed the, the book um, as well. And I tell people, you know, that Snowden's book, um, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. There's so many that I could mention. Uh, anything by Peter Diamantis. And do mm -hmm. not forget to read the tape okay yeah, don't forget don't tape. forget that book too yeah the <laughs> the links will be in the description um you got you got to get certain books so you know certain things sure. but you know as a as a trader do you then you know tell people hey put a certain budget to trade and never then you know when you make your money and you buy your house don't ever bet on the house because this is in vegas you know just to get that mentality do you teach people how to do that and if you do is there a retreat session or is it a one-on-one -on -one session or you just do it through your podcast and books so i don't really teach people how to trade it's not really what i do so i actually took my experience i mean i still do but i'm not a professional trader i do it for myself or my family um, I um, took all that experience and, you know, went into various other businesses. And in fact, in 08, um, I bought a failing real estate company called Home Real Estate Group. Um, it was uh, closed in March of 08. We know that September of 08 was the worst part of the real estate business. And I bought a brokerage in, in Newport Beach. And I um, effectively um, was a venture capitalist at that moment in time. And I was investing in something called recapitalization. And I took a flyer, but one of my friends were like, are you crazy? Because that was the worst part of real estate. But the trading part of it made me understand that when everyone is sort of trying to get out of something, everyone's running for the exit, but there's a fundamental sound business concept, that's when you buy. So um, it's really kind of um, a similar behavior to trading. If it's a really great asset as it's trading under value, then you buy something. And so it's kind of the Warren Buffett methodology. Is it a great value? Then you buy it and you go with it. So that's how I got into the real estate business. It was a, it was really a trade. And then I just saw an opportunity and then I landed in an extraordinary place for real estate, which is Newport Beach. And I grew this business from essentially almost bankruptcy to uh, we were one, I think it was the second largest Sotheby's in the world. So, I mean, we had, you know, 500 agents and then I ended up merging and selling it to another um Sotheby's and then they had 1200 agents and it did over 7 billion in business. So it was a great ride when I sold. So I've, I've had a lot of experiences that from my beginning of learning to be a trader, 
and understanding reading the tape and understanding situational awareness is when do you go in and out of a business? And it's taking me to other businesses as well in that same light. Awesome, awesome. And when you say Newport Beach, what a place to live, you guys. I have a friend who was a private pilot and now he does real estate and he's probably still flies, you know, the stars around, but that place <laughs> is a special place. And you may need to be a successful trader to live there. Because one thing I hate, I hate people in California who complain about the price because they can't afford to live there. Move! Move! There you go. <laughs> Arizona, uh, you know, Nevada's right next door. Oregon, plenty of land. Um, I got a question in your book, though. I think it was page 13. Um, I know my my Yiddish is terrible. You're right, not existent. <laughs> but I think you put, I, I, I know chutzpah, but then it's spelled chutzmah, C-H-U-T-Z-M-A. Is that a different way or is that another word? I'm always trying to I made learn. It up. I completely made it up. It's oh! Charisma. I mean, it's, it's my my language. So it's charisma and chutzpah. Uh, chutzpah, excuse me, now you got me going. Um, so chutzpah <laughs> is, um, you know, having the... Um, I, cojones. The, the, like, yeah, yeah, the cojones. Yeah. Just, yeah, you know, I don't want to... It's a G-rated program. I'm like, yes. Um, and so, and charisma is... Um, you know, having that ability to show who you are, having that ability to move or circulate. I mean, no matter what, businesses are really um, created by leadership. And that leadership, um, if you think about all of the incredible entrepreneurs over the years, they have a narrative. And that narrative is somehow related to a charismatic quality. So that's what, like talking about inner genius. That's your charisma. And it comes in so many different forms. So that's why I made up that term of like, what is that about you? Like, who are you? And so you can think about the various forms of charisma. There are people who walk through the world that are so good looking, no matter what they say, you're like looking at them. You know what I mean? That's not me. There are people in the world that have like this massive amount of intelligence. And like within a few minutes, you're like, wow, I just want to listen to this. There are people in the world that have all this like extraordinary energy and they just, you know, I just want to be around it. It's like positive or there's just electrifying energy. There are people in the world, I call them um, the velvet rope people. And it's like, you can look back to your junior high or whatever. Like, why does everybody um, want to be with these people? And it's like the velvet rope, you know, the club owner, they has a velvet rope. Like, I, you know, there's no rational reason, but they have a way of doing that. And it's a very successful, and it's not practice. I think you're just born with it. Successful way to... Um, create charisma. So I do think like what your specific narrative, what your brand, what your charisma, your chutz, chutzpah to combine is what creates that momentum or that success, whatever that success or that goal is that you want, um, whether it be financial or whether it be your family or whether it be artistic or whether it be to change something for your own specific legacy, whatever that is. And it's not, like I said earlier, it's not only about money. Definitely, definitely not. And I like that you, you know, talked about, um, you know, people's intelligence because, you know, some of the smartest people society says, you know, you look at a, a Stephen Hawking, <laughs> you look at, um, I don't want to say any current living entrepreneurs. So it's just as a semi-pro comedian, it's just too easy, but I'll use myself <laughs> to say, you learn things for the things that you don't have. You learn another talent and and gifted. And, you know, some people do look so good that they don't have to learn anything else. They can just be a right, pretty doll, right. you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell the people, though, you know, it's not all about money, but everybody wants to at least have enough for the things they need and get some of the things that they want, you know, unless you're a stoic monk. But can you talk about also... <laughs> So the, the community give back that you do or that you would like to do because with success, everybody also wants to, you know, give something back to people. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that um, my wife and myself, we've always wanted to give back to the community and come up with creative ideas in terms of, you know, whatever industry we're in, or if something's affected us, you know, how do we um, do something for those who've been affected who are um, in a less, fortunate position or don't have the power to um, change something. So whatever um, has happened to us in the past or whatever businesses we're in, we've tried to um, give to various um, organizations or change something for the better. So I mean, there's a lot of problems that are in the world. I don't think you can change everything, but I think that 
Um, that's, the community starts, you know, in your own backyard, as they say. And so you shouldn't just ignore things. Like if, if you're in a specific business or you're, um, you know, your passion is in some kind of sport or if your passion is in medical care, then follow up and do things to um, help others. I think that's an important part of um, being uh, human in this in this world that we live in. I think it, it's actually comes back tenfold, not necessarily from financial, but just from feeling good. I always say that like, you know, I my LinkedIn says finding joy through the success of others. And I honestly, I don't just say that. I mean, I've lived my life that way where I really, um, when I have someone come to me years later, if I've helped them with something, whatever it may be, come to me and say to me, you know, hey, Mike, you changed my life. That feels better to me than anything else I've ever made or bought or, you know, like whatever it is that like, you know, which is, I'm not saying it's a bad thing to have resources. Of course, it's nice to live in a nice house. Of course, it's nice to drive a nice car. Of course, all of these things that we want for validity, did we become successful? But the end result is that I do think that when you do help somebody else or help something, those those types of communications back, I mean, it's just, it's to me, it's priceless. I'm like, wow, it feels so good to me. I agree. I agree. And I'm glad that you brought that up because, you know, on the other, on this side, people do not always understand when I tell them, they say, what are you going to charge for me to introduce me to that person? I'm like, to introduce you to somebody, especially if it's an email. So that's what we're supposed to do. Who's charging you for an introduction? I want to know you have no friends. Um, and you know, <laughs> and, and I work pay or no pay sometimes because I care about the work and I have a team that they're going to get paid regardless. And you know, money, we, everybody wants money, but everybody around me has to be a boss. You can't work for me. You can work with me. And I've just learned that throughout the years that works for me throughout the different people in the books that I've read. I'm like, I don't want employees. Dave Ramsey is right. Employees come late leave early and still while they're there. I don't want those people. I want team members. So let me just build you help build you up. And what I have found is people come back, even if it's five years later, Kellen, I need someone to represent me. Kellen, I need help in, you know, this, that consulting PR. I'm a sports agent now. Thank you, Florida, for making it so easy. Mm -hmm. How that feeling of giving back um, people, I, I don't even know if you can it's hard to express that because people think, oh, you just set me up for the next thing. And it's like, I don't need anything from you. I just want to mm -hmm. give to live. Maybe I want to be a stoic monk one day and give it all up to say mm -hmm. I'm free. So do you find it like people think you're like an alien when you're talking like this? Because here you are a trader where it's all about the money, but then you say, I want to help you. And are, do you find that they're looking on like the, the back end if they become successful? Mike has his hand out which, you know, they probably need your help even then because they've never dealt with that much money. Here's the deal, as they say. Um, I think it's your responsibility in this world to open a, if you are in a place to open a door or window for someone, you need to. So I think that um, I find it extraordinarily reprehensible when I see people who are in positions to open doors and windows when they don't do that or when they keep it to themselves or they're fearful of their own loss of whatever that status success or money or whatever it is they've achieved so i do think it is responsibility of every and every single person in this world has ability to open a door or window for someone else every single person i don't care what your specific status is you do and so that's what i've always done so if I see somebody, it doesn't mean that they're working for me or a friend or even strangers. If someone comes to me, I'm like, if I had literally strangers, uh, you know, I, I'll be standing at a bar if I'm traveling on business or something and someone's like talking, I'm like, hey, you know, I know this person. Why don't you talk to them? And I'll just give it to them. And they'll call later. I'm like, oh my gosh, like what if that was amazing. Thank you so much. And what can I do for you? I'm like nothing. And so I think that that's really, really, really important. So yeah, I do think people sometimes think it's alien, which is sad. It's a sad reality. But I mean, you know, I want to say that, you know, my being um, for a lot of, I have to give credit to, you know, parenting that I had this parenting where I was, you know, unconditionally loved. I don't have those um, sort of feelings um, that I think that a lot of people, other people do. So maybe it's not fair for me to say that. 
Like I feel like it's my responsibility because I was unconditional love, because I was always given this ability to fail. And so that made you successful that I don't like fear those things. So maybe it's unfair for me to say these things. I mean, because I had this uh, background where I did have a trampoline springboard, there was a safety net for lack of better description for me that gave me these um, sort of like, I don't need anything back, you know, because I saw that and that's what I was taught. Um, so maybe it's unfair for me to push that on everyone else, you know, my feelings. And was know. that was that, you know, trampoline that you're talking about? Was that just more in the emotion and support or was it even financial where, you know, hey, we're, you're set up for life. If you do nothing yeah. else, that's it. Emotional, it. emotional support. There was no financial. I mean, I'm not, you know, of course I was like if I had completely failed and I was like without anything, I could have moved home and they would have fed me. I mean, I'm not going <laughs> to say yeah. that. I mean, it was always a safety net of roof over my head it wasn't my own or food in my mouth but um it, there was no uh like here you're set for life you know no it was not like that um, okay and i and i and i say that because as i offer mentioned earlier we're seeing so many people you know a lot of 30 and up and and folks are like you know, my, my kids never have to work. And I don't know what idiot would not want their kids to work. Why would you not want them to have some type of purpose? And my kids don't have to work sets a kid up to say, oh, well, there's nothing else for me to do. Maybe get high. And, you know, maybe that's why we see the rise in things. I don't, Mike is nice. You guys know, I don't give excuse. Um, bad things happen to everybody. And it's how we, you know, work that out and and worse things happen i worked with kids who were molested at five <laughs> and and oh, and they didn't really have a they didn't wow. have a chance you know in in our mind and that was our job to help them and and then they put them on lithium you know at five mm -hmm. you know right. and so then what so it's like those people i have a heart compassion for but it, it Every, there's too many excuses and we're finding people oh i'm blaming my mother you're 40 years old man you should have worked that right. out in therapy you know two decades right. ago <laughs> so well, i think it's it is interesting i mean society does have this way of like i'm going to blame others um for you know these issues but i mean i think there is something to be said about you know those who have had nothing but negative feedback you I mean it does affect i mean there are are cases where you know you hear people had nothing but it's horrible 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 and they break out and then they become leaders in whatever industry or art or whatever it is that they choose that's rare um it may very well be those genetics that we talked about earlier like they just were born that way and they were just lucky you know they was lucky to be able to break out so um I mean, I have like, I'm, I'm on the fence about that. I mean, to some degree, I sometimes hear like, I'm blaming and blaming and blaming, like, well, are you going to fix it? You know, you're 35 or 40, whatever, like, where are we going to sit here and um, talk about this forever? Like, like okay, that happened. <laughs> Let's move on. What's great about you? What's great about what you want? What are your goals? Are you realistic in your goals? And another thing that I teach is, I teach like, stay in your lane. Like, and that sounds funny, but like, people like, Look, I'd love to play in the NFL, but that's not going to happen. Okay. Let's face it. I'd love to, you know, be a professional athlete. That sounds like the greatest thing. You play game all day long and you get paid millions and millions of dollars. So like I, I was kind of um, not particularly athletic. <laughs> the hand-eye coordination was not great. <laughs> well, so, you could always be the kick the, the holder for the kicker, right? Right. Yeah, uh, there you go. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, you know, I think that um, what I mean by that is that what are you, you capable of? So I don't like those self-help books. I mean, my book is not really a self-help book. I novelized a story about someone trying to succeed. And, you know, I'm talking about all the things that I helped. Um, and he's sort of listening to a podcast and helping him and he meets me and, and how to great, create his goals. But I do think that people have to take stock of what they can do, what can and they can't do. And I think that's something that I think there's all these messaging out there, like you can do anything. I'm like, well, no, not necessarily. I mean, you know, you can be happy, you can do things. Okay, you can, what is the 
the the golden thing is like I want to be happy and self fulfilled. Okay, that doesn't mean that you're going to be all of these things that you may not be able to. So it really is the ex exploring what you're the best that you specifically can be. So it bothers me. I see these ridiculous um, uh, self help things like you could be anybody. I'm like that's absurd. You know, like uh, uh, really. <laughs> so well. well what I love about those things, and I, it's a love hate, you know, when I'm hearing certain things on um, YouTube usually, and I'm saying, wait, that's uh, is that Earl Nightingale remix. Um, you know, you're you're taking things that my grandfather would, you know, put the record on and play, or my pops would play, and you, and it's like, oh, okay, so we're just gonna remix it. Which then you can go to your scriptures, whichever books you guys read out there, and you can see those same things are in there. And you'll hear these stories in scriptures and churches and synagogues and mosques, and you'll never apply those miracles to your life. It just amazes me. So tell the people about, you know, where they can contact you. Tell them about your podcast, you know, how often that is, because you're in a sweet place where you're fit, you're old enough to have wisdom, but you're still young enough where they will let you come in the NFL because I see the guns and they'll let you at least hold uh, for yeah. the kicker. Yeah, well, that is from um, really tight underwear. So I've learned how to wear and push all the fat up. So that's how I've uh, established um, <laughs> biceps. So, uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, well, you certainly you can read the book. I'm certainly um, you can email me. I'm all over the uh, Internet, as they say. And I have... Um, Instagram called um, the Shapiro method. You can contact me that way. You can talk, contact me through email. I'll send that to you. You can give it to your listeners or um, in certainly uh, uh, through LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn as well. So there's many different ways and uh, to, uh, to talk to me if you want. I do respond to everybody. Um, I, I, I love to do that. So um, it brings up another point and which is funny about fitness. And I think that like, that's a really important part of my, um, teaching. And I say, I don't care what it is that you do when you weight lift or you walk or you run or you do CrossFit or whatever it is, yoga. I, I mean, there's so many modalities I and mean, you're like the greatest spinner of all time or whatever it is you want to do. But I think it's really important to do that. Um, I think it's um, keeps one um, centered. So it's been a lifelong um, thing for me being fit and uh and it's uh i try to pass it along so i sometimes find a lot of uh sort of negative feedback to people that are not doing things to be or try to be fit and start small and go to whatever goals it are so yeah i, I incorporate that into my daily conversations with people and sometimes they look at me like i'm crazy i'm like i don't care what you do i had um fortunate situation where um my nephew, who's 18, um, is uh, stayed with us uh, this summer, and he was my intern. So it was a lot of fun having uh, my nephew as an intern. And I would give him, you know, I think I'm, I, I think I'm a wannabe comedian. I don't know whatever works. So I would say to him, like, what I want you to do is spreadsheet all my flaws. I like you to write down all my flaws, okay, and spreadsheet them around. And I would have him come around with me, and I'm like, write that right down. I was just having a ball with him, and he was learning, you know. But he's like not somebody that really likes exercise or he doesn't really like athletics. And so I was constantly saying to him, just do something. I don't care what it is, do something. And like I call him all the time, like, just do something. I don't care what, just walk um, or do anything. So I think it's important, you know, from a multitude of reasons. So, yeah, I'm a big proponent of that. Uh, and I obviously that's all over the place. But I mean, so few people do when you read, you know, the statistics. Definitely. And nephew. Don't just look at your uncle, look at your uncle, your other uncle, Snoop Dogg down there. And right. how he has muscles, biceps, you know, after 40, I'm telling you, prostates and colonoscopies, y'all, y'all better prepare for it in hemorrhoids and banding and all that. <laughs> like, you know, you want to work on your health, check out Biome, you know, a Seattle company, um, it, you know, <laughs> it, get right now because if it catches all up to you at once, Woo! It's, it's a pain good. in the arse for real, and I'm not yes. talking arsenal. I'm talking. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's, it is scary. Yes, and I am a hypochondriac, so I'm like you know I have lots of 
doctors and I sometimes there's got to be something wrong there's nothing wrong with this it's kind of funny it's an ongoing joke in my in my household <laughs> my, my, my wife is a medical doctor she says I am too and even in school <laughs> you know when you were doing too much out there I would remember going to the clinic one time and what do I got my pelvis is bulging and the ladies <laughs> I calm down you got a hernia. You can push it back in. I said, I didn't know. I said, I couldn't read about this, but I mean, you know, I'm young and I'm freaking out, but it's, um, it's, it's something you guys got to focus on. And please, if you have any questions, DM me or Mike, because he, he, he has something that, you know, I don't have, I'm, I'm 40 plus, but he has a little more wisdom and a little more experience and you cannot put a price on that you know and so i'm just giving you guys the game because i want you to be healthy any last words for the people mike and i'll make sure to have your links in the description yeah i really appreciate that um last words is um you really need to and this is going to sound like everyone says this but you need to be confident and you need to be feeling good about your daily experience you need to wake up and push yourself into that positive mo uh, movement. You have to, no matter how bad it is, attitude is really a significant part of your ability to, going back to the book, read the tape. Sorry, I had to, I had to say that. This is a, <laughs> so if you have a bad attitude, you can't read the tape because all you're thinking about is, you know, I'm miserable. So you got to push yourself out of it somehow, some way. Anyway, that's the last words. I suppose. <laughs> Push it out. And eat, get eat, on. And eat a lot. Eat, yeah, food is very important. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Eat the right things. And, right. and you guys, what works for me might not work for you, but Peloton. Got the treadmill, got the, the bike, and, you know, the aesthetics on there, and the competition, um, and being able to community. I need that in life. So if that works for you guys, and you need competition, and can't get to jiu-jitsu weekly, you got it right here on the Peloton or, you know, get your own TRX band things, depending yeah, on. Yeah. So you guys have gotten the game. I think you've been blessed by the game. So make sure you share it with someone, like, review, all that good stuff. We love Apple reviews, you know, bless us. I got to push that more and more, my team says. So you guys share this. It will change somebody's life. Be blessed. Are you tired of the rat race in America? Are you ready to visit the motherland to relax and rejuvenate? Are you ready to explore all that Africa has to offer? Then check out the brand new Diversified Game Academy course, Prepare for My First Trip to Africa. Are you worried about being able to afford the trip? We got you. We will show you how to travel either on a budget or as a baller. Learn how to stress the value of the USD. Did you know that 100 United States dollars is worth over 1,000 South African Rand or 10,000 Kenyan shillings? or 54,250 West African CFA. Are you worried about taking your kids? Get the game from Kellen Cash, a bona fide world traveler, having traveled to almost 20 countries, several of those in Africa. Get the game on taking your kids on their first trips. Learn how to find the best tickets, get the visas, and plan your own adventures in Africa. Don't let Eddie Murphy have all the fun. Plan your own coming to Africa trip starring you, produced by you, and featuring you. If you are ready for a life-changing experience, sign up for our course today, Diversified Game Academy. Get prepared and purchase at diversifiedgame.com.